Hello and welcome to Career Ride. I'm Nishant and once again I'm here with a new topic. And my today's topic is data structure interview questions and answers in MCQ format. So without wasting time, let's get started now. All right, so let's begin with the first one. Of the following data structures, which follow the last in first out principle? And the options we have queue, stack, vector, array list. And the correct answer is option B, that is stack. Yes, the stack is a linear data structure that follows a particular order known as last in first out, that is LIFO where the last element that was inserted will be the first one to be removed. Alright, so moving on to the next question. The term push and pop is related to which of the following data structure? And the options we have array, linked list, stack, trees. And the correct option is option C, that is stack. Well, the process of inserting an element in the stack is known as push operation and the deletion of element is known as pop operation. Alright, so moving on to the next question. Which of the following is correct about 3D array? And the options we have, a 3D array is a collection of 2D arrays. A 3D array uses three subscripts to access an element. A 3D array adds an extra dimension and increases space exponentially and all of the above. And the correct option is option D, that is all of the above. Well, a 3D array is a multi-dimensional array and a collection of 2D arrays or multiple tables. Now let's see an example of 3D array over here. So in this example, int shows that the 3D array is an array of type integer. Test is the name of the array. First dimension defines the block size, meaning total number of 2D arrays. The second dimension defines the rows of 2D arrays. And the third dimension defines the columns of 2D arrays. Now coming to the next question. The operation of processing each element in a data structure is known as. And the options we have sorting. Merging, Managing, Traversal. And you know the correct answer is option D, that is Traversal. Yes, the Traversal is the process of visiting each node in a data structure and performing some action. For example, there are different ways to traverse a tree. So in this example, you can see there are different ways to traverse a tree. That is in-order traversal, pre-order traversal, post-order traversal, breadth first search and depth first search. Okay, so the next one is which of the following algorithm is not feasible to implement a linked list? And the options we have linear search, binary search, insertion sort, merge sort. But the correct one is option B that is binary search. Well, a binary search is not feasible on a linked list because a linked list allows only sequential access. In a binary search, it starts by comparing the target value to the middle element in an array. And to do this in a linked list, it would have to traverse the list from the first node to the middle node sequentially. And this increases the traversal step per element in linked list just to find the middle element. And this makes it slow and inefficient. Alright, so coming to the next question. What is the minimum number of fields in each node in a doubly linked list? And the options we have 2, 3, 4 and 5. And the correct option is option B, that is 3. Well, a doubly linked list would require at least 3 fields, which are previous field, next field, and the data field. Now coming to the next question. What is a full binary tree? And the options we have. Every node other than the leaf nodes has two child nodes. 
Every internal node has exactly zero or two children. All the leap nodes are at the same label and all of the above. And you know the correct option is option D that is all of the above. Yes, a full binary tree is a special type of binary tree where every internal node has zero or two children. And it is also known as proper binary tree. Now let's have an example over here. So in this tree, it has two nodes for all the internal nodes except the leaf nodes. In addition to that, all the leaf nodes D, E, F, G are on the same label. And hence we can say that this is an example of full binary tree. Now the next question is, the number of edges from the node to the root node is called as dash of a node. And the options we have degree, height, depth, order. And the correct option is option C that is depth. In any tree, the depth of node is the total number of edges from the root to that node. Now in this example, you can see the depth of A is 0, the depth of B and C is 1, and depth of G is 2. Now coming to the next question, in a full binary tree, if I is the number of internal nodes, then what is the number of leaves? And the options we have i, i plus 1, i plus 2, i minus 1. And the correct answer is option B, that is i plus 1. Yes, the number of leaf nodes is always one more than the number of internal nodes, that is i plus 1. Now let's have an example over here. So in the example, you can see A, B, C are internal nodes as they have at least one child. And D, E, F, G are leaf nodes as they have no children. And the number of internal nodes are 3 and leaf nodes are 4. That is I plus 1. Okay, so coming to the next one. What is the advantage of nonlinear data structure over a linear data structure? And the options we have. Nonlinear data structure can be traversed completely in a single run. Time complexity of nonlinear data structure often remains unchanged with increase in size. It is easier to implement a nonlinear data structure as compared to a linear data structure. And all of the above. But the correct answer is. Option B, that is time complexity of a nonlinear data structure, often remain unchanged with increase in size. Well, a nonlinear data structure such as trees can help finding a data item faster when searching as compared to a linear data structure. And that is why trees are often used for indexing in a database. Alright, so the next one is the situation when there is no space available and data is to be inserted into the data structure is called DAS. And the options we have overflow, underflow, risk flow, none. And the correct option is option A that is overflow. Yes, when a new data is to be inserted into the data structure but there is no available space, this situation is called as overflow. For example, if there is an array of size 4, then it can store 4 values only. And beyond that, there won't be any blank space to store any more value. And this situation is called as overflow situation. Okay, so the next one is, which of the statement is correct about recursion? And the options we have, recursion uses more memory compared to iteration. Recursion is similar to a loop and it will call itself until the base condition is not true. In recursion, when the base condition is true, then the function will stop calling itself. And all of the above. But the correct one is option D, that is all of the above. Yes, recursion uses more memory compared to iteration. Recursion is similar to a loop and it will call itself 
until the base condition is not true. And in recursion, when the base condition is true, then the function will stop calling itself. Alright, so coming to the next question, which of the following operations is performed more efficiently by doubly linked list than by singly linked list? And the options we have, deleting a node whose location is given, traversing through the list in both directions, reversing your list, and all of the above. But the correct one is option D, that is all of the above. Well, a doubly linked list has two pointers, left pointer and right pointer. The left pointer points to the previous node and the right pointer points to the next node which enable it to traverse in either direction. For deletion, a doubly linked list only requires the pointer which is to be deleted and not the pointer to the previous node as every node has a left pointer that points to its previous node. But a singly linked list deletion requires a pointer to the node and previous node to be deleted. And reversing a doubly linked list is also very easy. In order to reverse a doubly linked list, we just need to swap each node's next and previous pointers and update the head node to point to the last node. Now the next one is, choose the data structure that can be used to implement queues. And the options we have stack, array, linked list, and all of the above. But the correct one is option D, that is all of the above. Well, a queue is a linear data structure that stores elements sequentially. In a queue, data added first will leave the queue first, just like people on an escalator. You know, a person will join the escalator from the end, and the person standing at the front will be the first to leave the escalator. And queue can be implemented using array, stack, or linked list. Okay, so the next one is, a graph in which all vertices have equal degree is known as, and the options we have, complete graph, regular graph, multigraph, simple graph. But the answer is option B, that is regular graph. Yes, a graph in which every vertex has same degree or has the same number of neighbors is a regular graph. So here in this example, every vertex has same degree, that is V1, V2, V3, V4, all have same degree. Okay, so the next one is, which of the following condition occurs when we try to delete a node from a linked list that is empty? And the options we have, overflow, underflow, saturated, houseful. But the correct one is option B, that is underflow. Yes, we get an underflow condition when we try to remove a node from an empty link list. When a start goes to null or there is no more nodes to delete, this occurs. Now coming to the next question, which data structure is suitable to represent hierarchical relationship between elements? And the options we have DQ, Priority queue, Pre, Graph. But the correct answer is option C, that is tree. In hierarchical relationship, items are linked to one another in parent-child relationships. Of all options here, only tree data structure can establish a parent-child relationship between elements. Trees are non-linear hierarchical data structures, which consist of nodes that can be connected to one another. A tree is a data structure where there is no constraints on hierarchical structure. A node can have any number of children, and it can be used to store hierarchical data such as folder structures. Okay, so the next one is, considering the following tree, what is the degree of the root node? And here are the options. But the correct option is option B, that is 4. Well, a degree of a node is the total number of subtrees attached to the node or children it has. Now the next one is, considering the following tree, 
what is the height of the node 3 and here are the options but the correct one is option B that is 2 well the height of the node is the number of edges from the node to its most distant leaf node now let's see in this example here the node A has got height 3 B and C has got height 2 and G has got height 1 Alright, so coming to the last question in this series, considering the following tree, what is the depth of the node 7? And the options we have 2, 3, 4 and 5. But the correct option is option A, that is 2. Well, the depth of the node is the number of edges from the root node to that node. Now let's check in this example. Here the depth of the A is 0, B and C is 1 and G is 2. 